Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Holler Tile, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to 19th century Bavaria, specifically the Holler Tower region, which is known for its hops production, apparently, according to the rules. And in this game, each player controls their own little individual village in Holler Tower that's competing to raise the most crops to score lots of victory points in this Uwe Rosenberg designed farming simulation. And we are going to be farming the place up. Although, before I get going, I should say I'll be doing a solo run through today because thanks to the brilliant player scaling, I'll talk about a bit more about that in the final thoughts. Um, whether you're playing one, two, three, or four, the core gameplay works exactly the same. So by doing a solo game, I should give you a pretty good idea of what it like, plays like at any player count. Right, so we've got the worker placement board set up. I've got my fields. At the beginning, I've got three fields that are empty. I've also got one barley, one rye, and one flax. I know I've got one because it's in the one slot. If this were up here, I'd have three barley instead of one. And I've got six farmyard cards laid out here randomly. It came from the deck. And this is this board is also my timer. I'm going to be playing over six rounds. And during each round, I'm going to get one of these cards and add it to my hand. And uh, speaking of my hand, I start with four gateway cards and one points card. This gives me a little bit of direction in the game. My points card is I can score a big whopping 10 points whenever I've got 14 milk on hand. And this is going to give me kind of this gives me kind of a big picture goal that I'm trying to chase after. Because getting 14 milk on hand and not using it, well, that's going to Cost, that's going to be a lot of investment to get these 10 points. And if I want to do that, chances are I'm really going to have to start investing in sheep because it's sheep's milk in this game uh, if I want to get that 14 milk to score those 10 points. Because normally, resources are worth a fifth of a point each. So that's a much better return than normal. Alrighty, um, but... In addition to this one points card I've got that's giving me kind of a big picture goal to chase after, I've got these four gateway cards. And there are more gateway cards and more points cards we could get. These are quick little things I can do. Like if I ever have on hand three clay or three hops, then I can reveal this card and get two hops if I had the clay, or two clay if I had the hops. And so these give me, and like, oh, this says, if I've got hops that are actually planted in a field, I can reveal this, and hey, I can get some milk or some clay, plus I can sow a field. So, um, you know, these are giving me like little micro objectives to chase after. This is a big picture objective. And there are other types of cards besides. These farmyard cards, which basically give me opportunities to convert stuff into other stuff. And these, um, oh, they're income cards, basically. They give me a passive income for the rest of the game once I get them resolved. Although I forget what they're called. Market cards? Um, bonus cards, I think they're called. Anyway, so there's a bunch of cards. And as you can see, the game comes with a ton more. As part of setup, you take uh, particular groupings of different types of cards and put them into the slots. Everybody gets their starting five cards plus six more cards that are lying in wait for them. And we are ready to farm! Let's do it. Okay. Here's the summary of how each of the six rounds plays out. Each round has ten steps, which may sound daunting, but they go very quickly. Um, let's just look a bit closer. Step one of every round is we have to clear out some of the workers that have built up from the previous round. Although as part of setup, I basically put a worker in every in the small trade, in the busy weekend, in the sheep market. All these different worker placement spots have one worker right now. But some of those workers are going to clear out to make certain actions cheaper and easier to do. And that is driven by these quadrant cards, if we're playing a one, two, or three player game. If we were playing a four player game, we would be cu clearing cubes out of every single wor worker placement zone on the board. But since I'm playing solo, I'm only going to be clearing cubes out of one of these. Which kind of replicates the player scaling because uh, once I clear out one zone, it's like all the other zones are still filled up with stuff that other players have done. And if I want to do stuff cheaply, I've got to work in that one zone I've got. Let's see which zone it is going to be for the first round. It is, oh, this is a unique card. As you can see, I'm having a single player game, which means it's either going to be zone one or zone two. If I were playing a two player game, it would be zone one and zone two. And if I were playing a three player game, it would be zone three and four and either one or two. And if we were playing, Playing a four-player game, you wouldn't need to draw the card because it would be all zones that would get cleared. So, it's zone one or two, and this question mark means I have to choose randomly. And the rules say flip a coin. I literally forgot to grab myself a coin before I started filming. Um, let's just uh, grab a barley and a hops. All right, and we'll say the hops are zone one, the barley is zone two. I will just, we'll just you know, 
swoosh them around a little bit, and uh, I said the barley was zone two, so it was the hops. Zone one uh, randomly got cleared out. And that means in this first round, it is cheaper to do sheep breeding, sheep shearing, farming, clay delivery, and getting more gateway cards. But it's more expensive as his other players have actually moved into all of these other actions. I can still do these other actions, but if I want to go farming, I just need one worker. Whereas if I want to go to the town hall, I need two workers. And you know, if uh, somebody if somebody does the town hall and I want to do the town hall again, then I would need three workers. And after that space is filled, town hall can't be visited anymore until it gets cleared out. Okay, so that was step one. Um, the cubes get cleared out. And there's actually a little bit more to it, but this is like the first round. I'll explain when we get to round two how it gets a bit more complex than what I just showed, but that's just a basic idea. Step two, I grab um, my first uh, card over here. Now, I don't get to see what this is yet. I won't know until the end of the round what new ability I'm getting. I just take this, and um, because we are early in the game right now, I am getting six workers. You can see that written right up there on my village community center that every round I get six workers and I put them on this card. One, two, three, four, five, six... And after I've used all of these workers, which is basically my workforce for this first round of the game, then I'll get to find out what this card is, because it'll get added to my hand then. So anyway, next up, everybody takes their next card and gets workers. You just saw me do that. Now, if there had been sheep on this card, the sheep at this moment would die of old age, which is what this is reminding us. Now, I don't have any sheep, but sheep do grow old and die in this game because it's a big amount of time that's passing. But I haven't gotten any sheep yet, so I do not have to worry uh, about sheep aging. Next up, um, in step three, if I had any bonus cards active, they would activate right now and give me some income. It's as if I'd set up a market stall and it paid out. I don't have any of those because it's the first round. I definitely want to get some of those up and running before round two so I can get some passive payments. Then we move on to step four, which is the real meat of the game. This is the worker placement. We start placing workers out on the board. Or alternatively, instead of using workers to do actions... We can give up workers to get tools, which are a resource we are definitely going to need as we try to advance the overall status of our village. Uh, we need tools for that, definitely. And then we, um, after everybody's done all their worker placement, then we go on and do steps 5 through 10. We'll worry about those later, because now it's time for me to start working. And if I were playing with two, three, or four players, I, as the first player, because I've got the little cock doodle do here, um, I would get to go first, and then player two, and three, and four, and then would come back to me until everybody's used their workers. And now, what do I want to do? It's time for worker placement, folks. And remember, I like sheep that will make me milk so I can get that 14 milk so I can get those 10 points. So that should be one of the things I'm considering. But I'd like, I mean, heck, if I plant some stuff in two of my three fields right now, then I can get my third field uh, planted immediately. So that's a possibility. And hey, if something I plant in the fields is hops, then I can get all this bonus as well. So maybe I should, or I could try to get some jewelry, which just represents wealth that I can earn at the uh, town hall or the land sale. I could start trying to get this to, um, I mean, but this is really not a good card to play until after I've got a lot of sheep on a card. And remember, I want to get a lot of sheep to do this. So these two cards work well together. Um, these two cards work well together. And, um, yeah, so, and I think this card uh, won't necessarily fit into a combo. So, maybe what the first thing I want to do then is get myself to exactly one of you. Because as soon as I re reveal, or as soon as I complete any of the, as soon as I create a state of any of these things, I can immediately play this card. It's like a bonus I can do on my turn. So, if I wanted to get two of these three fields planted with my starting crops, well, there's a few different places I could go to plant. That's what this symbol is right here. If I decide to have a busy weekend, I can get one milk or one wool, and on top of that, I can um, plant crops in two fields. Whereas if I were fertilizing, well, first of all, I can move up to two empty fields into row five, which means they become much more fertile land to grow, but then I could only plant in one field. If I do cultivation, I could plant in three fields, but I want to plant in two of my three fields so that I've got that extra space so that I can complete this little uh, mini gateway objective. So, now, here's the problem. Remember, as part of this clearing out, these are the actions I want to do because any of these actions only cost one worker. Any of these other actions anywhere on the board, they cost two workers, as if another player had already gone there. 
But I do want to have the busy weekend. So if I, of my starting sick workers, if I take two of them for my first turn and say, hey, I'm going to have a busy weekend, well, let's go ahead and do it. I get one milk. Hoorah! Which, remember, I, I need to be collecting milk. I could take the wool instead, but I'll take the milk. And now I'm going to plant two crops in my fields, which are down here. So, as you can see, I've got one of all these crops. And what do I want to plant? Um, I'm going to plant two of them. I will go on ahead and plant barley, of which I have one. So I'm taking this, I'm taking the one barley I have, and I am planting it in this field. This is my best field right now. When I harvest it, it will generate four barley, because it's this high up. If I put it over here, if I planted this field with my barley, this field is not is a bit more fallow, I think is the term. It would only generate three barley, or two barley. So if I want a lot of barley, I could go right there. And so, that's one of the two planting actions I'm getting to do. And now I could also plant this rye, or this flax, in one of my other ones. Um, da -da -da. let's go on ahead. I don't think I need rye right now. Let's go on ahead and give myself some flax. And I'll put it on the low one. I'm only going to get two flax out of this. But anyway, that was my turn. I remember I had a busy weekend. I, I, delivered, I got some milk and I planted two fields, which you just saw. But before my turn is over, before we move on to the next player, I say, look everybody, if I have exactly one empty field, I can get two crops of the same type and I can sell one of them. And I get a market card. A little bit more closely at it right there. So I get all this stuff. And uh, so I'm gonna play this card and I'm gonna take two crops. Now crops, are considered rye, flax, barley, or hops. And remember, I had that other card about hops. Let's go on ahead and get... What was it? Two crops at the same time? Let's give ourselves two hops. So I get, I take a hops, and I put it up here. That means I have two hops now. If I put it over here, I'd have four hops. I've got two hops. Hooray! That's the first half. Now, I, can, I don't have to, but I could sow one of my remaining fields with those hops. I'm totally going to do that. So I'm going to take one of my hops which means I've still got one in storage. I had two in storage, now I've got one in storage. And so the one I just took out of storage, I'll use another thing, and I'll put right here. And now this means when I harvest later on, I'm going to have four barley, three hops, and two flax. Hooray! But hey, you know what? Before I'm done, I could reveal this card right now that says, hey, I've got to have at least one hops planted in fields. And if I reveal this, I'll get more milk or clay. And I could immediately plant another field, but here's the problem. My fields are full. So I could play this right now, but I think I'm going to wait a little bit and uh, see if I can get a fourth, or fifth, or sixth, or seventh, or an eighth. You can have up to eight fields out on your fields board, so that then when I reveal it, I'll get to do some planting immediately for free. So anyway, that was it. My turn is over. Um, I've still got these cards in my hand. Of course, they're all secret. I keep them to myself. This is the card I played. Everybody could see I did it. And I keep this around. Oh, wait, but I'm not done yet. Let's not forget the most important thing. I also got one um, bonus card, one marker card. So let's see what that's going to be. Okay, this says, whenever I want, if I've got a sheep on hand and I get rid of it, then for the rest of the game, during step three of every round, I will get um, a uh, hide, an animal hide. Plus, at the end of the game, I'll score three points. So the sooner I do this, the better. Uh, if I can get this done in the first round, um, th this is going to give me ten animal hides over the course of the rest of the game. But that means i got to get a sheep. But I want those sheep to be making the, uh, the milk for me because I've got my big picture item. But anyway, so this is now my hand of cards that I'm still trying to pay attention to. So that was my first turn. And I've got, I've, I'm, a, I'm quite a bit richer right off the bat. It is now somebody else's turn, and they might uh, have some of their own workers, and they might they might play three workers to go to busy worker, or they might come over here to farming, etc. Et but again, I'm playing solo, which means we just come right back to me. We're just going to keep going until I've played all my workers. Because it's like with all these other cubes that are out here, all the other players have already played their workers ahead of me. Really nicely simple scaling system. So, for my second turn, what am I going to do? Well, all of a sudden, I need to get a sheep now. Now, now, now. How can I get a sheep? Well, ideally, I should do it over here because, again, I only need single workers. I could go for sheep breeding, but this says I need two or four milk to get one or two sheep. I don't have two or four milk. I've got one milk. So if I could get another milk first, then I could come here and um, give up that milk to get the sheep. But um, that doesn't make much sense for me, I think, because I could just as easily, again, unfortunately, spend two workers instead of one and come to the sheep market and get a sheep and a hide. 
Or where else could I get sheep right now? No, oh, I could go to the butcher, but that's uh, butchering a sheep to get meat and hides. Um, or I could come to the weekly market. So I could come to the sheep market and get hides and uh, sheep. Or I could get meat and sheep by going to the weekly market if I want to get the sheep. But that's not all. Not only do I want to get a sheep so I can get this thing in play, but I want to... Uh, let's see, what might I want to do? I might want to do some farming. Because this says, hey, I can add one more field and it'll come in on the fifth row. So it'll be the most fertile field imaginable. And then... Or, or, so I could do that, or I could um, plant four fields. You know what? Let's do... I did a more expensive action. Let's do a cheap action right now. Let's just do some farming. Boom. Boom. And uh, I could either plant four fields. I'm certainly not going to do that because my fields are all full. Instead, I'm going to give myself a fourth field. It's going to come in at the highest level. Boom. Just like that. That's a big one. And now... Now... And that was my whole turn. I did that. I might say, hey, everybody, I've got some hops planted. I think I'll take this, please. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this act. I'm going to play this card. And it says, look, I got hops, so I can take more milk or clay. And I do need to get some clay before the round is over. Because I'm going to need clay to develop my town's carpentry. I'm going to need barley to develop my town's brew house. I'm going to need meat or milk to develop the cooling house. I'm going to need um, rye or barley or flax to develop the bakehouse. And I'm going to need rye or... Um, hides or wool to develop manufacturing. This is a big part of the game. When we get a little bit later in the round, it's um, over here in step nine, we can spend some of the resources we've earned to increase our economy. And the more we increase our economy, the more workers we get because our town becomes more prosperous. I've only got three more workers. Um, so time is running out. Let's go on ahead though and play this right now because I've got the barley. And that says, hey, get I, I, mean, I, don't, I, I do want clay, because without clay, I can't advance my carpentry. But I could go to the nursery and get clay. I could go to clay delivery and get clay. But, if, but this is going to mean I'm going to have two milk, which means I could go to sheep breeding and get the sheep with only one worker. So Because otherwise, i got to spend two workers to get the sheep I need to um, get my income. So, oh boy. Yeah, I think, I think it makes more sense... To, I mean, either one's sort of out. I'm going to go for the sheep, though. I'm going to I'm going to go for the milk. All right. So I got some milk instead of the clay, and I can now plant a field. So I've got this field that's going to generate five whatever I plant there. I could give myself five rye or five um, hops. I'm already growing everything else. Let's go on ahead and grow, grow some rye. All righty. So at the end of the round, when I harvest, I'm going to be getting five rye, four barley, three hops, and two flax. Plus, I've already got one hops and two milk lying around. Thanks, little um, gateway card. That was my second turn. I um, I did expensive and I did cheap. Now all the other players would go, and then it'd be my turn again. I'm getting down to three workers, and now I'm going to use only a single worker and do some sheep breeding. And this kind of hurts. I'm giving up that milk I just collected, but in exchange, I am getting one sheep. Hoorah! Now, whenever you get sheep. You store them over on this farmyard board. Uh, there's all these paddocks. Since I'm in round one, you will notice it says, hey, if you get sheep in round one, this little arrow says, put the sheep on this card. So I'm putting the sheep on this card. Remember I mentioned earlier, at the beginning of a round, when we get a new card, if there's a sheep on that card, it will die of old age. This sheep is going to die at the beginning of old age in round four. So I've got two more rounds of getting milk out of it. Which means the two milk I spent for it, I'm going to get the two milk back over the next couple of rounds as it produces milk. And then eventually it'll die. Although there are steps I could take for the sheep's well-being. Sheep shearing, and uh, there's one other one, small trade, they allow me to extend the life of my sheep by moving them further along. And they can move further along, they can even move to where they will not die over the course of the game, and, I, and they can continue producing milk. But this is a future problem, that my sheep will eventually grow old and die. Right now, I went to sheep breeding, I spent all that milk, I got a sheep which is going to generate milk for me. But before I'm done, ah, uh, see, here's the thing. I have, to, I have to get rid of this sheep, I have to slaughter this sheep to get this ongoing bonus. And I could do that right now, but I'm not going to for reasons you will see. Timing with these cards is everything. So we'll worry about that a little bit later. So that was my uh, turn. I've still got two more workers. Where else am I going to go? Now, before the round is over, I need to start thinking about, ideally, I want to be able to advance all of these, which means I need at least one clay, at least one barley. I'm going to have the barley. I, I don't have the milk or meat from the cooling house. I don't have the clay, so I need milk, meat, or uh, and clay. 
the bakehouse, I'm going to have the grains. The manufacturer, I'm going to have the grains. So with my last two turns, can I get um, a, a clay and a milk or meat? Yes, I can. Well, can I, actually? Well, yes, I can if... Oh, no, I can't. Here is the problem, folks. I've got two workers. This worker could come over here, and hey, that could give me uh, clay equal to the round number. So I'd be spending one worker to get one clay, which is what I need to advance my carpentry. So I could do that. And then I've got one worker left. And with a single worker, I would need two workers to come here to small trade to get milk. Or two workers to come here to get meat. I don't have enough workers. Do any of my cards save me? Um... Uh, unfortunately, this says have three hops, but three hops out in the field isn't. I got to get my three hops into storage. Once I've got three hops in storage, this will give me. T oh, this will give me two clay. Okay, this is going to work. This is going to work. I've, I've got a plan, folks. I've got a plan. So this is where I'm going to get the clay. Uh, so I just need some meat, which is going to be a bit painful. Because here's another deal. I would just like to um, come over here with only a single worker, and get another gateway card that could potentially be another way to get more resources for completing another little micro-objective. But right now, I and um, right, no, no, I'm getting the clay from this. Right now, I need to guarantee get myself some milk or some meat. And none of them can be gotten off a single. I have to spend two. I could go, I could try to get lucky and maybe I, but that'd be a, a pretty, I, I, I don't want to make it, I don't want to miss my chance. I'm going to come over here to the weekly market. And those are my last two workers. And uh, that gets me another sheep, which again, because I got in this round, comes over here and joins the other Baba. And I get some delicious meat. All right, I've got one meat and one hops in storage, and I've got all these others that I'm going to harvest pretty soon. Okay, so that was that turn. And again, everybody would keep going until everybody's used all their workers. And some people might finish sooner than others because some people might do a lot of really expensive actions that require three workers. Some players might be really efficient and only use single worker actions. Although often what you'll find is the thing you really want to do, you got to spend more. So um, anyway, we are done with the worker placement. Now we get to find out, because you can see this card is available and it gets added to my hand. And what have I got? This is another opportunity to slaughter the sheep I've got. And this will be an immediate thing. Get rid of a sheep to get two milk and two tools. And get another ongoing bonus card. Oh, I like that. So here's the interesting thing. I've got two cards that uh, have me get rid of my sheep, sell them at market or something like that, to get on permanent ongoing hide income and a one-time um, bonus milk and tools. So, I'm going to hold on to these for now. I'm not necessarily going to do anything with them. That was step five. Everybody gets their card and adds it to their hand. Then, step six. It is time that if we have any fields that did not produce, if, say, I had another field. Say, I um, instead of getting one field over here, I had gotten... Um, let's see. I think there's one where you can get multiple fields. Or no, maybe that was a card ability. But anyway, if I had another field over here, let's say, and I had not planted anything on it, any field that doesn't have anything planted gets better because this is representing crop rotation and le letting fields lie fallow for a round so that they can become more fertile for the round. Um, so if I had a field that was empty, it would get better. And there's also another little reminder, all the empty fields I have get better for future rounds, plus I get one bonus. And unfortunately, since I had no empty field, if I had one empty field, it would get better and I could use it for the bonus. And it would then be a super fertile field that produces five whatever I plant. But as it is, I filled up all my fields, which was efficient, but now I am being less efficient because I'm not I'm not getting advantage of letting my fields rest and recuperate, which again is something real farmers have to do. But anyway, so we're done with step six. Everybody would do this simultaneously. Now on to step seven, we harvest, and it's a two-step. First we get our stuff, then the fields get exhausted. So I have five rye, four um, barley, three hops, and two flax. Now, actually, I have four hops. I've got three, three hops, plus I had this hop down here. You can put multiples on here. You can you can have 500 things if you just keep putting more of these tokens to represent. Now, just to make things a little bit cleaner, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to say, instead of having three hops and one hop, I'm going to take this off the board and move this up here to show that I really have four hops. Um, but I could also represent I've got four hops by putting two hops on the level two, because it's two times, you know, two, each of these represent two. But anyway, I've got four hops, four barley, five rye, not much flax, one meat, no milk, uh, no nothing else. Alrighty. 
And so, now, every field that produced is now going to get weaker for a future round. Although they can never get, they will always produce at least two. But my super field, now if I let them rest in the future, they can start climbing back up. So anyway, that was the one, two. And now, if I have any sheep, it's time to milk them. And I have two sheep. So right off the bat, I've got two of the, what was it? I, do I, th I think I need 14 milk to get those 10 points. I am on the way. And now, and everybody would do that, um, you know, the more sheep you have, the more milk you generate. And, uh, and this is just a passive income as long as the sheep are still alive and still with you. Now we go on to step nine. This is the other big step. Most of these steps are really quick and tiny. The big ones are step four, where we're sending our workers out, and then step nine, where we're spending resources, including tools, to be able to upgrade our village's industry. And uh, that means we've got to come back over here and look a little bit more closely. As it says, um, if I want to, I can spend... Oh, these all indicate what I can spend to move my industry to the right. And I want to do that. Because the more I move my industry, the more workers I can get, and ultimately, the more points I can generate. So they all start right here. I need to spend clay or um, uh, rye to be able to increase my carpentry. But when I'm doing it, I have to, I can only use rye if I use more clay. Now the amount I have to spend for all of these is based on the round. We are here in round one where it reminds us we need to spend one good of the shown goods to be able to move any of these industries. If I had um, five flax, I could potentially move my manufacturing ability up five times. Although the problem is after I move it once, we reach some obstacles, which are represented by these stones. But these really represent um, things that slow down the advancement of our technology in our town. For me to clear this stone out of the way by pushing it to the right, I would have to have tools. So if I had one tool and, say, one hide or, or and, and, uh, and a wool, or if I had two flax, I could spend one, and then I could spend a tool to push that, and then I could go again, and I would have increased my manufacturing capacity by two. Now that has no immediate effect, but once all, of these have increased by at least one, that means our village overall output increases. And you will note, I have now, oops, I move up to producing seven workers every round because the village has gotten bigger. So this is a big part of the game. Saving resources to be able to put them into carpentry, brewing, cooling, baking, and manufacturing. Because that's what Hollertau was known for. Uh, it was the epicenter of beer generation uh, in Bavaria at this time in history. And so I've now got to start deciding, how am I going to spend my resources to move those forward? Okay, but remember I said, I can play these cards I've got at any time. And right now, before I start spending, I think I need to play some of these cards. First of all, let's go on ahead and play this card, which, which says, hey, if I've got four or at least three hops in storage, which I do, I've got four, then I can get two clay. I'm going to play this right now and get the two clay that I need. Hoorah! And I'm now going to spend one of those clay to increase my carpentry. Hooray! Awesome. Now, when we get into round two, we're going to need to spend two resources in, for every step up. In round four, we need to spend four resources in every round up. And discounts do start coming to play. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, I've increased my carpentry with a last minute um, you know, proof that because I'm such a great hops farmer, I got some clay. Oh! And I got another one of these income cards. Let's not forget that. Let's see what it is. This says, hey, okay, this is a hard one to do. If at any point I have on hand six sheep and seven milk, then I can reveal this. I don't have to spend them. Um, because you'll notice uh, when I have to spend them, there's an arrow saying, hey, take this, spend it to get that. This is just saying, uh, when it's a notepad, if I have all of this, then I can say, look, because I've got all this, I now have an ongoing income of one sheep every round plus three points. So this is a new thing. And now this works really nicely with the fact that ultimately, I want to have 14 sheep, one or 14 um, milk. Once I get to six sheep, they're producing six milk for me. And uh, that means I'm not very far away from getting seven milk. And then once I've got that, then I'm getting more sheep for free that hopefully will produce more so that I can get up to the top end to get these 10 points. All of my stuff is starting to come together. But I've got a tough choice to make now, folks. Because I've already gotten some milk out of these sheeps. I could get rid of these sheep right now to get other benefits. And right now... I could get myself some tools so I could push further. And by the way, I should reset all my rocks. 
because I uh, was just bumping them around for the example. I could get some tools right now if I wanted them to be able to push these boulders, these impediments to our, our town's advancement, our industri industrial advancement. <sighs> but if I do that, that means I'm done getting milk out of that sheep. I don't think I need this right now. Well, hold on a second. Let's come back to it. Let's see if I'm... Um, all right. So I need at least one barley to move my brew house. Boom. I'm going to do that. Hey, there's there we go. I'm up one step. I've got more barley, but I cannot push any farther without getting some tools. So we'll come back to that. I have one meat. So I go from one to zero. And I'll push... Or I, or I could give up the meat or the milk. But obviously, I want to hold on to the milk because I've got those rewards. So I'll give up that meat to go to the cooling house. All right. Oh, and again, I've got more milk, so I could push up further again if I had tools to push those rocks out of the way. Next up, my bakehouse. To move, I need to spend one. I need to spend a barley or a rye or a flax. I've got a lot of rye. Let's just spend one rye and move it on up. And again, if I had tools, I could get those impediments out of the way. And now finally, for manufacture, I don't have any wool. I don't have any hides. I do have two flax. I could spend this flax to move up, or I could give up a sheep right now to get the hides. I don't. I want to keep my sheep around and produce more milk, so I'm going to give up one of my flax to move forward. Now, because I've done that, everything has moved forward once. And remember, everybody's doing this simultaneously, so it sounds like this would take forever, but everybody's in their own little world figuring out. Although, the play, rules say that if you want, you can actually do this in turn order. But anyway, because everything moved forward once, I now, in the next round, will get seven workers because we are a bigger, more prosperous town. But I'm not done yet, folks. I've hit my walls, but if I give up a sheep, I could get two milk. And I'm only going to get two more milk out of those sheep before they die of old age anyway. So maybe I should just do that now and also get some tools and another card. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to say bye-bye, uh, Baba. And that gets me two milk. One, two. I'm on my way to four milk. Woohoo! And two tools. One, two. I don't know why I'm putting all these in one. I could have just easily put all these here. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing that. I've got four milk now. And hey, I've got two tools. Hooray! All right. And I get another one of these income cards. Let's see what it is. Any... Okay. Oh, this is an interesting one. This is kind of painful. Anytime I want, I can trash three cards in my hand and then permanently give my uh, three points. And every round, I will get one gateway card for free. <gasps> oh, am I going to do that? Maybe I'm not going to chase after jewelry. Maybe I trash that. And maybe I don't want to kill my other sheep or sell my other sheep. Maybe I trash that. But these two cards work really well together. Oh, I mean, this one leads to that one. I'd have to give up one of these to do this so that I can get card income for free. Oh my gosh, that's a tough choice. I could give up on the big picture and just be happy with the medium picture and get rid of this. Then I give up those three cards and I'm giving myself income for the rest of the game. Oh, I want this. I want it, my precious. But that's the crux of this game. All these cards that come and go, trying to find synergy between them and making compromises, giving up future stuff for stuff today. I'm totally going to do this right now. I am going to give up three cards. <sighs> right. I'm going to give up three cards. Although, no, 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 no. I was going to say, could I get another card to give up? I could get another card off of this, but I have the jewelry. I haven't gotten any jewelry, so I can't do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm playing this card, and I basically now put this card... You know, these are the cards I've actually played. These are all done. This is an ongoing income card. Which means every round, I'm going to get a card, a gateway card for free. And you saw how great those gateway cards are. And normally, you have to spend workers to come over here to get them. I'm going to be getting them for free. But now, what three cards do I give up? All right, I'm not going to sell my other sheep. Because I want my sheep for these other two things. I say goodbye to that card. That's one. I say goodbye to this wealth-based one. That's two. And then, the heartbreak. The big picture points. But this is No, I'm going to give up the big picture points. This is points and it's income. I say goodbye to that. I've trashed three cards and now I've got card income and I've still got one card in my hand. Okay, but here's the important thing, folks. I did all that. I now have two tools on hand. I will spend one tool to um, push... Uh, what? To push... Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Before we push, before we push, uh, let me just jump in to say... 
I am totally spacing out. I'm acting like it's the final round of the game when it's really the first. Because here's the deal. In rounds one, two, three, four, and 5, if you use tools to push those rocks out of the way so that your uh, industry can advance, you do not consume the tools. You get to keep them to use again in the following rounds. Uh, they can just be used once per round. It's only in round six, when the game is almost over, uh, when you're doing those final pushes, that the tools will finally break and you lose them. So use and lose them only in round six, rounds one through five, like right now. Use them and keep them to use again. Right, okay. Uh, folks, this is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on, right? I'm sure you do, but let's get back to it. What am I going to push? The, uh, I've got two tools. So I'm going to be able to push one boulder... Uh, or I can, I, I basically I can push two boulders because I can't. You'll notice, hey, if I push this, or if, if I push this here, then I move this up. Then I would need two tools to push both of these forward, so I can move again. So I'm going to push two different rocks up. Um, let's see. I've got a bunch of milk. I need milk, but I need the sheep too. So I'm going to give up one milk to push this boulder forward, and then I'm going to give up one milk to push this forward. And I'm, I'm pushing my cooling house technology. Alrighty, so I've done that one. And then I've got one more tool. I will spend this tool, and I'm out of tools now, to push. Uh, let's go on ahead and push. I've got, I've got a lot of, of the rye. Let's push this boulder forward. And now I'll spend one rye to push the bakehouse forward. And now I'm almost halfway towards upgrading my city's capabilities again. And I've still got a lot of resources, and I've still got one card in my hand. And I then say to everybody, hey, I'm done. I am done pushing my industry forward and using tools to get obstacles out of the way. And so now, the last thing that happens in a round is we reset those obstacles. You didn't think those obstacles were going to go away, did you? Um, you know, you, you can thematically think of it as, you know, I'm like the leader of the town. I'm thinking of the big picture issues. There's lots of little things the town folk take care of, and that's represented by now. Hey, the town folks have pushed... Uh, basically reset the rocks. So the rocks are always empty space rock, empty space rock at the beginning of the next round. And this represents the town folks having cleared some of the obstacles, and I need tools for clearing big obstacles. So there we go. So um, basically, if you never have tools, you will always be able to potentially move all of your... Um, your uh, industries forward at least one step if you've got the resources to spend on them. And anyway, folks, that's it. We have finished round one. And now we are on to round two, where we find out how do these workers clear out. And this is when it's going to get a little bit more interesting than in the beginning. Let's take a quick looky-loo. All right, so I'm in a solo game, so it says zone two clears out. And now what that means is, this is why I didn't say before, um, it's not that all of the cubes get removed. It's that the highest level grouping of cubes gets removed from each region. So this is the highest level grouping. This is the highest level grouping. The highest level grouping. Highest level gr so functionally, these got cleared out. But since I went to the busy weekend, this um, doesn't get cleared out. Instead, only the highest level grouping goes away. So having a busy weekend is still more expensive. And as you can see, these are the most efficient actions you can do in the game. Going to the weekly market is the most expensive thing you can do in the game right now. Alrighty, so that was the card. And again, if I were playing with um, more players, then more spaces would have been cleared out, so there'd be more uh, cheap stuff for players to do. But in a solo game, only a little bit, only one zone got cleared out. Alrighty, and that's how the scaling works. It's beautiful. Alrighty, now we um, potentially see some sheep die, and we get in another card and some workers. Fortunately, no sheep here. This comes over here, and I now put seven workers on it. So I'm going to be... Uh, I've got a bigger prosperous town because of all those investments I've done. And so I can get more work done. And there were no sheep on this card. And now, there's a reminder here that if I want to upgrade my industries, now I need two goods per industry. Alrighty. And uh, this sheep is getting close to go dying unless I um, do some sheep shearing or something like that. So, there we go. Now, I get some income, everybody. Oh, wait! Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. I had that income. All right, so I had this. All right, yeah. Oh, I haven't played this yet. So, this income I do not have yet. This is still in my hand. This is the income I played. I trashed all those cards. So, my income is one freebie card. And this says, hey... If I have one empty field, the same thing as before, then I can plant meat on the field as if it was a crop. Jen and I, we wondered quite about what this is. Is this like um, we're basically uh, having like 
uh, you know, a rat farm or something like that, where we're, um, you know, we've set out some traps and now we're trapping rats and selling them as meat. I'm not quite sure, but functionally, I can start producing meat. If I invest some meat, I can produce meat in my fields, which presumably means hunting or trapping or something like that. So this is, I've got two cards in my hand, thanks to this ongoing income I've got. And that was the only one. Other players might have different income at this point. Now, I start doing the worker placement. And remember, instead of putting workers out, I can just sacrifice workers to get tools. I got my tools through a, a handy, well-timed bit of card play. But if you desperately want tools to move these up, I could say right off my first turn is I'm going to give up these three so I can get three tools because I'm planning on doing a really big move later on, as an example. So I could do that. But instead, well... I'm on my way to getting the sheep, and the sooner I get these sheep in, the sooner I can get this sheep income. I've got one sheep to my name. I need to have. I need five more sheep. Where can I get sheep? Well, if I get four milk, I could get two right there, and I could do this multiple times. Um, if I come here multiple times, if I spend five of my seven workers, I could get two sheep. Um, and then, I mean, but if I, I don't have three more workers to get three sheep, so, urgh, this is a tough one to do. You know, maybe I should have trashed this one. You know what, I think, with the benefit of hindsight, I think I want to stick with my big picture and forget about that interim picture. I'm all about that big picture. I'm still just trying to get that, that uh, 14 milk. Which means, strictly speaking, I still need to get more sheep. Um, and also, I need to get some meat, and I need to get these fields filled so that I could plant meat in these fields and start generating meat, which is a prime component for advancing my cooking house. So, that's something new. But there are other things I could do. For instance, this is a big one. Town Hall would cost two. If I come to the Town Hall, then what happens is I move one craft building to the left. Because these are advanced, these are a little bit... I, I, my bakehouse and my cooling uh, technology is more advanced than everything else. I could downgrade one of them. Pew! You can imagine that's selling off some of the bakehouse equipment that we got. I could downgrade those to get to wealth. And wealth is really great. Wealth is just... I mean, if I have 10 wealth at the end of the game, that's 10 points. That's a very nice return. But instead, anytime I want... You remember um, how I was having to spend resources? And now, in the second round, I have to spend two resources for each of these. In round three, I have to spend three resources to move them up. At any time, no matter what round it is, instead, you can spend one wealth to move them up. So this, later on in the game, becomes a very effective way. And so I could, de I could decrease one right now to start building up wealth. And if I still had this objective of having three wealth on hand so that I could get barley based on how much sheep I've got plus another uh, income card, you better believe I would do this right now before somebody else jumped in there and made it more expensive. But since I jettisoned that wealth card, I, I mean, although I could sell some land, I could come over here. Which means I basically trash any one of these fields, probably one of these lousy ones that are, you know, uh, almost useless. And that gives me a wealth and three clay. That's not bad. One wealth, three clay, one, two, three. Or yeah, I already have one clay, so that puts me up to four clay. And that has me set for advancing my carpentry for a while. Because it's all about, it's all about two things. Trying to make sure you've got the right combination of goods to advance your industries, and trying to make sure you've got the right stuff to be able to advance your cards. All righty. Um, so if I did that, all right, I have to give a field. I'll just give up one of these lousy ones. And hey, that means I'm one step closer to having exactly one empty field so that I can plant meat, as an example. Now, another thing I can do, I talked about, but I didn't really mention it. Uh, if I want to do a, a cheap and easy free action, I could come over here. Two things will happen. I get a card from this deck. I just draw and get whatever I get. Plus, I take the first player marker. Now, in a solo game, it doesn't really matter. But in a multiplayer game, being first, getting first dibs on the cheap stuff, that's a big deal, as in most worker placement games. And whenever you take a card, you that's going to be a big, useful thing. But you also take the first player marker. But the interesting thing is, multiple players could uh, use these actions. And it's the final player who uses those actions that will truly be the first player for the next round. But if I were to do this, then I'd have a new goal. Have more jewelry than fee. At which point I get a bunch of income and another, um, or I get a bunch of items and another income card. That means I'd have to get four jewelry. I've got one jewelry in three fields. So that would be a tough thing to do. Not that that's necessarily what I'm doing, but, um, or I could spend two. I have one big goal of getting all the milk. If I come over here, then I can have another big goal 
have eight fields and score 13 points. And hey, if I've got eight fields, that's great too. Although, I just killed a field. Um, so that actually sets me back on this goal. Very, very tricky. I mean, if you're going to try and get these cards, get them as soon as you can um, because they are hard to do. And the sooner you get them, the, the sooner you won't make bad choices. That means you wasted time. Um, but anyway, remember, I still got to get all that milk. I still got to get sheep. I could come, it would cost me three workers over there, but I could get a sheep over here with only two workers. And um, that would get me a sheep, which, because I'm in round two, shows up there. And I would get my first animal hide, as an example, which is another thing that I can use to advance my manufacturing uh, faculties. All right, now I don't have any goals about, um, about it, but that is definitely an option as well. And if, say, if I went with that, now I'm down to three workers. And again, other players, if I were playing with more players, uh -huh, more stuff would have been cleared out, but players are grabbing spaces as we go. But instead, it's just stuff clears out slower in a solo game. So I've got to make tough choices in my, in my race over six rounds to score at least, what is it? I think, I think the rules say that you really don't want to consider it a win unless it's like 110 points. Is that what it was? I've done. I played one solo game and I did not do it. Oh yeah, 110 points you could consider a win. Although if um, no, 100 points you could consider a win, but 110 would be considered extraordinary. I've got some practice before I can get that high. But um, as you might imagine, every time you play, you're gonna have a different grouping of card types because these cards are in different groups that um, you know they have different things they focus on and whatnot. But there's so much replayability with that, and the way the areas clear out based on these quadrant cards and all that means um, well, every time you play Holler Tile, you're gonna have some exciting farming ahead. But if you'd like to hear more about that, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen. Go to the final thoughts in five. Four, three, two, one.